mousing a shackle. Okay, so just to go on to what the idea is behind mousing a shackle, and very often when you're using a shackle, this will probably go up towards a crane or something like that. So we've got a hefty strop round here at the top of our shackle. And then at the bottom here, we can change our loads by just basically unscrewing the shackle pin and taking our line out or our strop. But one thing that can happen when you are changing over loads, etc., is during the process of changing over the loads, you could accidentally knock your shackle round. And if you accidentally lock it round, you can see here that the mousing now is preventing it from coming separate to the other strap or rope. So in other words, what the mousing is doing, it's not load bearing as such, but what it is doing is preventing from accidental slippage of the shackle and then you end up losing your shackle. So as you can see here now, I've undone the shackle. I can now put another strap or rope on, which is for lifting, do it up, and you can now see in that process, our shackle is safe, won't fall off, because of the mousing that we've put on there. Okay, so to mouse our shackle, as you can see, I've got my shackle in front of me and also just underneath there, I've got my cordage or twine, depending on the size of the shackle, that we're going to use to actually mouse this shackle. The first thing I'm going to do is just get hold of my cordage and what I'm gonna do is just get the two ends together and then just run it through my fingers until I get to the end of the line there and I've now got a bite and that bite is in the center of my cordage. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to pass that bite, so pass that bite underneath and you're looking to go at the narrowest part of the shackle so it doesn't slip and slide when you've actually created the mousing and now that I've passed the bite underneath, which is in my left hand, the next thing I'm going to do is just take the right hand two strands that I've got there and pass them through that bite and take all the cordage through. And you can now see, for those of you who recognize it, we've tied the cow hitch, but when it's tied in this particular manner, it's known as the bale sling hitch. So now that we've tied the bale sling hitch, I'm just going to pull it up nice and tight, just to make sure it's nice and tight because we want this to be tight. The mousing will be tight around our shackle. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to separate my two leads out and we've now got a top lead and a bottom lead. And it doesn't matter which order you do this in, but what I'm going to do is now take the top lead and I'm going to pass it underneath so it comes to the back of the shackle. So when I now bring them up, or take all that cordage through, and now when I bring them up together, you can see here now that from the bale hitch, or the bale sling hitch here, it's the one line is going over the top of the shackle, and the other one is going underneath the shackle. Now the next thing that I'm going to do is, I'm going to take the top line, and I'm going to pass it over the top and round to the left hand side. So take it over the top and round to the left hand side and then with the bottom one, I'm going to do exactly the opposite. I'm gonna take it around underneath and over the top to the right hand side. So we've now gone round once at the top and once at the bottom. And the next thing I'm going to do is just make sure they're nice and tight and parallel to each other, not crossing over. And the next thing I'm going to do is go round again one more time with the bottom one, take it around over the top, and then do exactly the same with the top one, take it round the back, bring it round and over the top, and it's now gone around again. Now, depending on how much cordage you've got and how much room you've got on your actual shackle for your mousing will determine how many times you can go round. You want it basically to go round to be secure, 
but it's not load bearing as such. Only load it's gonna bear is the actual weight of the shackle itself. So now that we've gone round with both strands, what we do now is we bring them up together into the middle and allow them to cross over. So the bottom one is going around and it's they're now crossing at this center point here. Now that we've done that, the next thing that I want to do is I want to bring the bottom one up round and we're basically turning it through 90 degrees. So take the bottom one and move it up so that it touches the top one and they cross over at that point there. And then once they've crossed over the, that point there, the next thing we want to do is we want to put the frapping on. So as you can see here now, our lines are crossed. So the bottom line goes across and then goes up at 90 degrees and the other line goes up across there and down by 90 degrees. And the next thing we're gonna do is actually put the frapping on. And to put the frapping on is very simple. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the top strand here and all we're going to do is wrap it round our previous turns on our shackle itself. So I'm going to get hold of it and I'm just gonna pinch it in the middle so I've got a hold of it. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just gonna take this and wrap it around our cordage underneath and then just bring it around over the top, bring it up through underneath, a little bit fiddly. And then we've got, we've just gone round the once there. And what we're going to do now is just line it up so it stays in the middle and then wrap it around again and all we're going to do is go round over the top don't let them cross over go round over the top bring it through underneath whoops get my porky fingers through the hole there that's it and then pull it up nice and tight and you can see now here that we're starting to get turns going around and we're working to the right hand side here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go around a few more turns to the right hand side and then we'll come back and do the left hand side. Okay, so as you can see, I've gone round with my frapping a couple of times extra and I'm now going to do one more turn. So I'm gonna go around one more time with my frapping and this is just a little nifty little trick so I'm gonna take it around over the top, down, take the cordage through, take it round one more time, and then bring it up at the bottom here. So bring it up, up, up the bottom, trying to keep my fingers out of the way so you can see it. And so now I've done that, the next thing I'm going to do is, you'll notice here, if I push back slightly, I've slackened that one turn of frapping, and what I'm gonna do now is where I've got that little bit of slack there, I can now pass my cordage up through that last turn there. So get hold of the end of my line, pass it up through that last turn. Whoop, getting stuck. And then pull through the excess. And what we've done now is then pull it up really nice and tight. And what I've done here now is I've locked it in place at that point here. And so what I'm gonna do now is we can leave this right hand side one alone and the next thing I'm going to do is just go onto my left hand side here and I'm gonna do a number of turns around here. Some more frapping going off to the left. So take it around underneath, take it through at the back, bring it over the top and there we go we've got one turn there. And so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just going to go and do a few more turns to the left hand side and then we're going to go on and do what's known as the riding turns. Okay, so as you can see, I've done some frapping, frapping turns going off to the left hand side here and what I want to do now is just lock this cordage in place so that I'm just going to push it back a little bit, get a loop, at that point there and then pass my working end through that loop that we've just created there or that is going through that turn pull the excess through make sure it doesn't tangle on the way 
make sure it doesn't cross over at any point and then pull it up really tightly and now you can see we've locked it off and it's locked off on both sides here now and it's ready for us to do the riding turns. Okay, so we've now done our frapping from the middle to the outside with using both strands of cordage. And then when what we're going to do now is wrap the cordage around again. And when we come back over the top, it's known as riding turns. So just check underneath, make sure everything is nice and tight. It's fairly springy to touch. And the next thing we're going to do is it doesn't matter which lead we use first. So I'm going to take the top one here and I'm going to bring it around, pass it underneath and then up through the top again. And all we're going to do now is simply do wrapping turns all the way to the middle and I'll do exactly the same again on the other side. In fact, I'll come back to the other side in a second. So I'm gonna carry on to the middle with the right hand one and I'll see you again in a second. Okay, so as you can see, I've done some riding turns going from the outside back to the middle again and my working end is going off up to the top. And I'm gonna do now exactly the same using the bottom strand, but heading in the, so this one is going up and over to that side. So we're going to take this one down and round and up through and I'll do the first one. So take it down underneath, pass it through. And there we have it. We have our first riding turn appearing there. So just make sure it goes back and what I'm going to do is now pull it up nice and tight, take it under again, take your working end, pass it underneath, bring it up and just make sure that you're doing it nice and tight all the way back until I get my left hand lead here back to the middle. Okay, so as you can see, I've done my riding turns going from the outside inside that one's going up to the top and this one's going from the left hand side back into the middle and it's coming out at the bottom here. And the next thing I'm going to do, just makes it a little bit easier for me, is I'm going to turn this round. Hang on, before we turn this round, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tie a reef knot at this point here. And the reason that I'm choosing this point to tie the reef knot in is if there's a strap or a strop going through either the top or the bottom, they're not going to interfere with the actual knot itself. So keep it nice and tight, turn this round, and so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tie the reef knot. And if you're not sure on how to tie the reef knot, I'll put a link in the description below. So the first thing I do is I take my left hand rope, pass it over my right hand one, so left is going over this right hand one here, and then take it underneath the right one and bring it through. And then pull it up nice and tight. And there we have it. We've now locked that into position. The next thing I do is I take my right hand lead, pass it over my left hand lead, and then bring it up underneath and through and all going well, we should have then a nice reef knot tied at that point there. And then all it leaves me to do is I'm going to cut these ends here and we then have a nicely moused shackle.